is the following an optimal solution for the transportation problem? If not, modify it to obtain the optimal solution. So let's first understand the transportation problem here. So there's a company which has three plants, P1, P2 and P3 and they have a supply capacity of 70, 55 and 90 units respectively. Now there are four warehouses that the company has which have a demand of 85, 35, 50 and 45 units respectively. Now the cost of shipping from the plants to the warehouses has also been given to us. This cost is per unit. So for example, in order to ship one unit from P1 to W1, the cost is 6 rupees. While if you have to ship one unit from P1 to W2, the cost is 1 rupee and so on. Now, the transportation problem is to find an optimal solution or the cheapest route to transfer the material from these plants to these warehouses such that the supply and demand constraints are not violated. So that is the transportation problem. Now for the transportation problem, we have been given the initial feasible solution. So we have been given that P2 will ship 55 units to W1, P3 will ship 30 units to W1, P1 will ship 50 units to W3, P1 will ship 20 units to W4 and P3 will ship 25 units to W4. Now we are being asked to find out if this is an optimal solution. So whether this is the cheapest cost that can be obtained for this transportation problem. And if not, then we are being asked to find out the least cost route or the best solution or the optimal solution. Typically in solving a transportation problem, the first step is to formulate the transportation table. So in this case, we already have the transportation table. The second step is to establish the initial feasible solution. So in this example, we have already been given the initial feasible solution. We however don't know which method has been used to establish the basic initial feasible solution. So in this example, we'll proceed with step number three first, which is to test the initial feasible solution for acceptability. So the first step in this particular example will be test the initial feasible solution for acceptability. In this step basically we are finding out if the initial feasible solution is acceptable to proceed for an optimality test or not. So this is not an optimality test. This is to find out if we can proceed with an optimality test or not. So the first condition to test for acceptability is that the number of allocations should be equal to m plus n minus 1. So allocations should be equal to m plus n minus 1 where m is the number of rows and n is the number of columns. So in our case we have three rows that is m is equal to 3 and we have four columns so n is equal to 4. So m plus n minus 1 is equal to 
3 plus 4 minus 1 which is equal to 3 plus 4 is 7 minus 1 is 6. Now let's find out the number of allocations. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 allocations. So the allocations is also equal to 6 and m plus n minus 1 is also equal to 6. So this condition has been met. Now the second condition is the m plus n minus 1 allocations should be in independent positions. So basically all allocations should be in independent positions. So the allocations are said to be in independent positions when it is not possible to change any individual allocation without either rearranging the positions of the allocations or violating the capacity and demand constraints. So if we move any one allocation then we'll have to rearrange the position of the other allocations or we'll be violating the capacity and demand constraints. Now a simple rule of thumb for allocations to be in independent position is that it is impossible to travel from any allocation back to itself by a series of horizontal and vertical jumps from one occupied cell to another without a direct reversal of the route. So what that means is that if we start from let's say this square P1 W3 and if we try to make a closed loop by a series of horizontal and vertical jumps from one occupied cell to another we can't come back to the same square P1W3 without reversing the route. So let's say we start from P1W3. Now from P1W3, we can then move to P1W4. From here we can take a right turn because this is an allocated cell. So the next right turn we can take at P3W4. So from here we can either go to P3W2 or P3W1. So whichever place we go, we can't go back to P1W3 with the series of horizontal or vertical lines. Let's see. So from here we can go here to P3W1 and then from P3W1 we can go to P2W1. Now where will we go from here? Had there been an allocation here P1W1, yeah then we could have gone here and then from here we could have gone back and that would have meant that P1W3 allocation is not in an independent position. But that is not the case so we were not able to create the closed loop. So this is an independent position. Similarly, if you check for all other allocations, you'll find that all of them are in independent positions. So this condition has also been met. So since both the conditions have been met, the initial feasible solution is acceptable to proceed for an optimality test. That is, we can now find out whether this solution is optimal or not. So now the next step, step number two, so there are two methods to perform the optimality test. First one is the stepping stone method and the second one is the modified distribution method. In this example, we'll use the stepping stone method. Now the first step in the stepping stone method is to proceed row by row and select a water square. So a water square is a square which does not have any allocation while stone squares are the squares which have an allocation. So let's first select P1W1. 
Now the next step is to establish a closed path using rectilinear motions that is moving horizontally and vertically only. Starting from the selected water square via stone squares and then back to the same water square. A right angle turn should be made only at the stone squares even though you may skip the stone or water squares. So from here we can go to P1W4. Now this is a stone square so we can make a right angle turn. So from here we will go to P3W4. Now again this is a stone square so we can make a right angle turn. So from here we can go to P3W1. Now P3W1 is also a stone square so we can make a right angle turn and then from here we can go back to P1W1. Now remember that in the previous step that is when we are doing the acceptability test and we are finding out whether the allocations are in independent positions or not, we were trying to create a closed loop for the stone squares and we were not able to do that and that is how it should be. In this step now for the optimality test we are trying to create the closed loop for the water squares and not the stone squares. Now after creating the closed loop assign alternate plus and minus signs on the closed path starting with a plus sign on the water square. So here this is the square that we start from so we will do a plus so basically we are trying to find out what is the effect on the total cost of transportation if we move some allocations to this square P1W1. So that's why the plus sign. Now since P1W1 has a plus sign the alternate square which is P1W4 will have a negative sign. P3W4 will have a plus sign and P3W1 will have a negative sign. Now the next step is to calculate the net cost change for the path and the net cost change is obtained by summing up the unit cost of each cell on the path. So as I mentioned we are basically trying to find out what happens if we try to allocate some units to this water square which is P1W1. So this has a plus sign and due to the constraints that we have we have to have a alternate plus and minus sign. Now we have to sum up the unit cost to find out what is the net cost change if we allocate one unit to P1W1. So the net cost change will be 6 which is the unit cost for P1W1 minus 3 plus 7 minus 10. So 7 plus 6 is 13, 13 minus 3 is 10, 10 minus 10 is 0. So basically what this means is that even if we allocate some units to P1W1, there will be no benefit to the overall total cost of transportation. So let us note this down. So the first water square that we picked up was P1, W1, the path was P1, W1, P1, W4, P3, W4 and P3, W1. And then we have to assign a alternate plus and minus sign starting with a plus sign on the water square. So this is plus, this is minus, plus and minus. And then we have to find out the net cost change. So this is equal to 6 minus 3 plus 7 minus 10 which is equal to 0. Now the next step is to repeat these steps for the remaining water squares. 
So the next water square let's pick up is P1 W2. So P1 W2. Now for P1 W2, let me first erase the closed loop that I created for P1 W1. So for P1 W2, we can go to P1 W4, then to P3 W4, then to P3 W2, and then from here back to P1 W2. So the closed path becomes P1 W2 and then from here P1 W4 then to P3 W4 and then to P3 W2. Next we have to assign the alternate plus and minus signs. So minus plus minus and then next we have to calculate the net cost change. So the unit cost at P1 W2 is 1. So 1 minus P1 W4 is 3 plus P3 W4 is 7 minus P3 W2 is 12. So this becomes 1 minus 3 is minus 2, minus 2 plus 7 is 5, 5 minus 12 is minus 7. Now let's take the next water square which is P2W2. So for P2W2 the closed loop can be P2W2 to P3W2 to P3 W1 to P2 W1 and then back to P2 W2. So P2 W2 the next is P3 W2 the next is P3 W1 then P2 W1 Next we assign the alternate plus and minus sign so minus plus minus. Next we have to find out the net cost change. So P2 W2 the unit cost is 5, 5 then minus for P3 W2 the unit cost is 12 plus for P3 W1 the unit cost is 10 then minus for P2 W1 it is 11 so the net cost change is 5 plus 10 is 15 15 minus 11 is 4 4 minus 12 is minus 8 now let's pick up the next water square which is P2 W3 Now for P2 W3, we have a little complicated closed loop. So from here we can go to P2 W1, then to P3 W1, then to P3 W4, then to P1 W4, then to P1 W3, and then back to P2 W3. So let's note this down. So P2 W3 to P2 W1 to P3 W1 to P3 W4 to P1 W4 to P1 W3. Now let's assign the alternate plus and minus signs. So minus plus minus plus and minus. 
Now next we have to find out the net cost change for this closed path. So this will be equal to 2 minus 11 plus 10 minus 7 plus 3 minus 9. So 2 minus 11 is minus 9, minus 9 plus 10 is plus 1, plus 1 minus 7 is minus 6, minus 6 plus 3 is minus 3, and minus 3 minus 9 is minus 12. Now let's take the next water square, which is P2W4. Now for this one, we can go to P2W1, then to P3W1, then to P3W4, and then back to P2W4. So P2W4, P2W4, P2W1, P3W1, and P3W4. Next we have to assign alternate plus and minus signs. So minus plus minus. Next we have to calculate the net cost change. So for P2W4 it is 8 minus P2W1 11 plus P3W1 is 10 minus P3W4 is 7 so 8 minus 11 is minus 3 minus 3 plus 10 is 7 7 minus 7 is 0 now let's move to the last water square so the last water square is P3W3 so from here we can go to P1W3 to P1W4 to P3W4 and then back to P3W3 so for P3W3 P3W3 to P1W3 to P1W4 to P3W4 now let's assign alternate plus minus sign so minus plus minus and next let's calculate the net cost change so P3W3 is 4 minus P1W3 is 9 plus P1W4 is 3 minus P3W4 is 7 so 4 minus 9 is minus 5 minus 5 plus 3 is minus 2 minus 2 minus 7 is minus 9 now after we have calculated the net cost change values the next step is to evaluate the solution for optimality by observing the sign of the net cost change. A negative sign indicates that a cost reduction can be made by making the change in allocation to that particular water square. So only if all the signs are positive, it means that the optimal solution has been obtained. But in this case, we have multiple negative values. That means the optimal solution has not been obtained yet. So we have this negative value of minus 7, then minus 8, minus 12, and minus 9. So the largest negative net cost change value is for P2W3. Now let's proceed with the next step which is to iterate towards optimality so now we have determined that this solution is not an optimal solution so now we'll modify this solution to obtain a better solution 
and then again we'll check if that is an optimal solution or not. So the first step in iterating towards optimality is to select the water square with the largest negative net cost change. So we already determined that P2W3 has the largest negative net cost change. So we'll select P2W3, which is this square. Now let me create the closed loop for this square that we had already seen previously. So basically here what we are saying is that if we add any allocation to P2W3 then the cost of one unit reduces by 12 rupees. So now we want to allocate as much as possible to this square so that the overall total cost of transportation reduces. So next what we have to do is to subtract the smallest of the figures from each square at the negative sign on the closed path and add it to each square at the positive sign on the closed path. So basically the maximum we can allocate to this square P2W3 is the maximum that we can subtract from the squares with the negative sign. So let's evaluate the squares with the negative sign. So this one has 55, this one has 25, and this one has 50. So we can only allocate 25 because if we allocate more than 25 then this becomes negative. So we can allocate 25 units to P2W3 and we'll subtract 25 units from P2W1 so it becomes 30 we add 25 to P3W1 so now the allocation becomes 30 plus 25 which is 55 we have to subtract 25 from P3W4 so the allocation becomes 0 we have to add 25 to P1W4 so the new allocation is now 20 plus 25 which is 45 and then we have to subtract 25 from P1W3 so 50 minus 25 is 25 so with this changes let's prepare our new transportation table so this is the new transportation table that we have obtained after the first iteration so let's quickly find out the total cost of transportation at this point. So the total cost is equal to so the units to be shipped multiplied by the unit cost of shipment so 25 multiplied by 9 plus 45 multiplied by 3 plus 30 multiplied by 11 plus 25 multiplied by 2 plus 55 multiplied by 10 plus 35 multiplied by 12 so this is equal to 25 multiplied by 9 so 25 multiplied by 10 is 250 and 250 minus 25 225 so this is 225 plus 5 threes are 15 1 carryover 4 threes are 12 plus 1 13 plus 11 threes are 33 so 3 3 and 1 0 plus 25 twos are 50 plus 5 5 0 plus 12 fives are 60 6 carry over 12 threes are 36 plus 6 is 42 so let's first add the unit places so 5 plus 5 is 10 so 0 and 1 carry over so 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 3 6, plus 3 9, plus 5 14, 
plus 5 19 plus 2 21 1 and 2 carry over 2 plus 2 4 plus 1 5 plus 3 8 plus 5 13 plus 4 17 so 1710 rupees now this may or may not be the final solution so let's find out if this is an optimal solution or not now before we proceed with the optimality test we have to first find out if this solution is acceptable to proceed with the optimality test or not so the first condition for acceptability is that the allocation should be equal to m plus n minus 1 now we know that m plus n minus 1 for this transportation table is 6 because we have 3 rows and 4 columns so 3 plus 4 minus 1 is 6 now let's count the number of allocations that we have so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so the number of allocations is equal to m plus n minus 1 and the next condition is that all the allocations should be in independent positions so if you evaluate all these allocations are in independent positions so this solution is acceptable to proceed for an optimality test now to test for optimality the first step is to proceed row by row and identify the water squares so the water squares are p1 w1 p1 w2 p2 w2 p2 w4 p3 w3 and p3 w4 next step is to establish a closed path using rectilinear motions starting from the selected water square so for the first water square which is p1 w1 the closed path is p1 w1 to p1 w3 to p2 w3 to p2 w1 and then back to p1 w1 so let's note this down so p1 w1 to p1 w3 to p2 w3 to p2 w1 next we have to assign alternate plus or minus signs so minus plus minus next is to find out the net cost change so p1 w1 has a cost of 6 6 minus p1 w3 has 9 plus p2 w3 has 2 minus p2 w1 has 11 so 6 minus 9 is minus 3 minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1 minus 1 minus 11 is minus 12 now let's proceed to the next water square which is p1 w2 which is this one so for p1 w2 the closed path will be p1 w2 to p1 w3 to p2 w3 to p2 w1 to p3 w1 to p3 w2 and then back to p1 w2 so let's note this down so p1 w2 to p1 w3 to p2 w3 to p2 w1 to p3 w1 to p3 w2 and then back to p1 w2 let's assign alternate plus minus signs so minus plus minus plus minus now let's find out the net cost change value so p1 w2 is 1 minus 9 plus 2 minus 11 plus 10 minus 12 so 1 minus 9 is minus 8 minus 8 plus 2 is minus 6 minus 6 minus 11 is minus 17 minus 17 plus 10 
is minus 7 minus 7 minus 12 is minus 19. Now let's proceed to the next water square which is P2W2. So for P2W2, the closed loop will be P2W2 to P3W2 to P3W1 to P2W1 and then back to P2W2. So P2W2 to P3W2 to P3W1 to P2W1. Now assigning alternate plus minus sign, so minus plus minus and then finding out the net cost change. So P2W2 has a unit cost of 5 minus P3W2 has 12 plus P3W1 has 10 minus P2W1 has 11. So 5 plus 10 is 15, 15 minus 12 is 3, 3 minus 11 is minus 8. Now the next water square is P2W4. So let's find out the closed loop for P2W4. So it will be P2W3 to P1W3 to P1W4 and then back to P2W4. So P2W4 to P2W3 to P1W3 to P1W4. Now let's assign alternate plus minus sign. So minus plus minus and then the net cost change. So P2W4 is 8 minus 2 plus 9 minus 3. So 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 plus 9 is 15. 15 minus 3 is 12. Now the next water square is P3W3. So let's find out the closed loop for P3W3. So the closed loop will be P3W3 to P3W1 to P2W1 to P2W3 and then back to P3W3. So P3W3 to P3W1 to P2W1 to P2W3. So minus plus minus and the net cost change value will be 4 minus 10 plus 11 minus 2. So 4 plus 11 is 15 minus 10 is 5 minus 2 is 3. Now the last water square is P3W4. So let's find out the closed loop for P3W4. So it will be P3W4 to P3W1 to P2W1 to P2W3 to P1W3 to P1W4 and then back to P3W4. So P3W4 to P3W1 to P2W1 to P2 W3 to P1 W3 to P1 W4 and then back to P3 W4. Now assigning alternate plus minus signs and then let's find out the net cost change value. So 7 minus 10 plus 11 minus 2 plus 9 minus 3 so 7 minus 10 is minus 3 minus 3 plus 11 is 8 8 minus 2 is 6 6 plus 9 is 15 15 minus 3 is 12 so now that we have found out the net cost change values for all the water squares let's evaluate the values so we still have a few values with negative sign which mean that 
if allocations are made to that water square the total cost will reduce so the square with the largest negative net cost change value is this one here which is p1 w2 so p1 w2 this one and since we have negative net cost change values basically we have not yet reached the optimal solution so now again we have to iterate towards optimality so the first step is to select the water square with the largest negative net cost change and that is p1 w2 so let me draw the closed loop for this square so p1 w2 to p1 w3 to p2 w3 to p2 w1 to p3 w1 to p3 w2 and then back to p1 w2 and this is positive negative positive negative positive and negative now next step is to subtract the smallest of the figures from each square at the negative sign on the closed path and add it to each square at the positive sign on the path so let's evaluate the squares with the negative sign so this one has 30 35 25 so the lowest is 25 so we'll allocate 25 to p1 w2 now we'll subtract 25 from p2 w1 so the remaining allocation is 5 we have to add to p3 w1 so now the allocation is 80 to subtract from p3 w2 so now it becomes 35 minus 25 which is 10 we have to add to p2 w3 so 25 plus 25 is 50 and you have to subtract from p1 w3 so it becomes 0 so this becomes our new and improved transportation table and now we'll again do the optimality test to find out if this is an optimal solution or not so this is the new transportation table that we obtained after the second iteration let's quickly calculate the total cost so it is 25 multiplied by 1 plus 45 multiplied by 3 plus 5 multiplied by 11 plus 50 multiplied by 2 plus 80 multiplied by 10 plus 10 multiplied by 12 so this will be 25 plus 135 plus 55 plus 100 plus 800 plus 120 which is equal to 1 2 3 5 rupees so at the end of first iteration the cost that we had was 1710 rupees and now we have a cost of 1235 rupees so we have been able to reduce the overall transportation cost now let's find out if this is our optimal solution or not so first we have to find out if this solution is acceptable to proceed with the optimality test so the first condition is m plus n minus 1 should be equal to the number of allocations so in this case m plus n minus 1 is 6 let's calculate the number of allocations so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so the number of allocations is also equal to 6 the next condition is that all the allocations should be in independent positions so if you look at these allocations these are all in independent positions so since both these conditions are being met we can now proceed with the optimality test now the first step in the optimality test using the stepping stone method is to proceed row by row and select the water squares so this is a water square this one p2 w2 p2 w4 p3 w3 
and P3 W4. Next step is to establish a closed path using rectilinear motions starting from the selected water square. So now that we have found out the net cost change for all the water squares, let's evaluate the sign of the net cost change values to find out if we have already achieved the optimal solution or not. So as you can see there are still net cost change values with negative sign. So definitely we have not yet reached the optimal solution. So P2W2 seems to be the square with the largest negative net cost change value of minus 8. So this means that we have to iterate towards optimality. So the first step again is to select the water square with the largest negative net cost change which we have identified as P2W2. So P2W2. So let me quickly draw the closed loop for this water square. So P2W2 to P2W1 to P3W1 to P3W2 and then back to P2W2. So plus minus plus minus now we have to subtract the smallest of the figures from each square at the negative sign on the closed path and add it to each square at the positive sign on the path so between 5 and 10 the smallest is 5 so we'll add 5 to the squares with the positive sign and subtract 5 from the squares with the negative sign so the allocation for P2, W2 becomes 5, for P2, W1 becomes 0, for P3, W1 becomes 85, and for P3, W2 becomes 5. So this becomes our new solution. Let's create the new transportation table and find out if this is the optimal solution or not. Let's quickly find out the total cost. So 25 multiplied by 1 plus 45 multiplied by 3 plus 5 multiplied by 5 plus 50 multiplied by 2 plus 85 multiplied by 10 plus 5 multiplied by 12 25 plus 135 plus 25 plus 100 plus 850 plus 60 and this is equal to 1195 rupees so after the second iteration we had a total cost of 1235 rupees and after this iteration we got the total cost of 1195 so we have definitely again reduced the total cost now let's find out if this is an optimal solution or not so first we have to test for acceptability to proceed with the optimality test. So first condition is m plus n minus 1 should be equal to the number of allocations. So m plus n minus 1 is 6, 3 plus 4 minus 1 which is 6. Let's count the number of allocations. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So that condition is met. The second condition is that all the allocations should be in independent positions. So that condition is also met. If you observe, you'll find that all the allocations are in independent positions. Next, let's proceed with the optimality test. So first step is to proceed row by row and select the water squares. So P1W1, P1W3, P2W1, P2W4. P3 W3 and P3 W4. Next step is to establish a closed path using rectilinear motions starting from the water square. So after finding the net cost change values, let's evaluate the solution for optimality by observing the sign of the net cost change. So the presence of negative sign indicates that we have not yet 
achieved the optimal solution and we need to further improve the solution so let's proceed to improve the solution now the first step is to select the water square with the largest negative net cost change so the square with the largest negative net cost change is p3w4 with a value of minus 7 so p3w4 is this square here let me create the closed loop for this square so p3w4 to p1w4 to p1w2 to p3w2 and then back to p3w4 plus minus plus and minus now the next step is to subtract the smallest of the figures from each square at the negative sign on the closed path and add it to each square at the positive sign on the path so between p1w4 and p3w2 the smallest figure is 5 so we'll add 5 to the squares with the positive sign and subtract 5 from the squares with the negative sign so the allocation at p3w4 becomes 5 at p1w4 it becomes 45 minus 5 which is 40 at p1w2 it becomes 25 plus 5 which is 30 and at p3w2 it becomes 5 minus 5 which is 0 so this is our new improved solution let's create a new transportation table with this solution and find out if this is the optimal solution or not so this is the new transportation table let's find out the total cost Thirty multiplied by one plus forty multiplied by three plus five multiplied by five plus fifty multiplied by two plus eighty five multiplied by ten plus five multiplied by seven. So this is equal to thirty plus one twenty plus twenty five plus hundred plus eight fifty plus 35 and this is equal to 1160 rupees now the total cost that we had achieved in the previous iteration was 1195 rupees so definitely again we have been able to reduce the total transportation cost now let's find out if this solution is optimal or not but before proceeding with the optimality test, we have to find out if this solution is acceptable to proceed with the optimality test. Now the first condition for the optimality test is that the number of allocations should be equal to m plus n minus 1. Now in this case m plus n minus 1 is 6 and let's count the number of allocations. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So that condition is met. The next condition is that all the allocations should be in independent positions. So if you observe, you will find out that all the allocations are in independent positions. So now we can proceed with the optimality test. So the first step in optimality test using the stepping stone method is to proceed row by row and select the water squares. So P1, W1, P1, W3, P2, W1, P2, W4, P3, W2, and P3, W3. Next step is to establish a closed path using rectilinear motions for each water square starting from the selected water square. Alright, so now let's evaluate the solution for optimality by observing the sign of the net cost change values so here for this iteration we don't have any negative net cost change values which means that this solution here is the optimal solution 
So finally, after four iterations, we have arrived at the optimal solution. And the total cost of transportation is 1160 rupees. Wow, this was a long one. Four iterations took a long time.